What's going on everybody? My name is Matt Moore. I'm here with Dr. Scott Young and we've been doing a series on money, Nasara, Jasara, the reset that may be coming and we've been having a great conversation but I really wanted to sit down with him and pick his brain about his thoughts on the mark of the beast, inflation, what does that look like with end time uh, theology and thoughts and, and just the whole idea itself. So if you're interested, stay put, stay tuned. We'll be right back. So, Dr. Scott, let me let me get your opinion on this, um, or actually, let me get your thoughts on this. Uh, a lot of people find revelation and end times and the whole idea of un, you know kind of taking this puzzle and putting it together really challenging, and they 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 just kind of walk away from it and say, "Ah, that's too hard. I don't want to think about that." So they don't really study that part of the Bible. What what was it that got you into end time, you know, I guess thinking or end time studies? Well, I mean, because I had dyslexia um, and I never really read that much because it's hard for dyslexics to read, um, I got into... Uh, and now you've made all those books. Yeah, I have, I have 11 now <laughs> on my 12th book here too, so it's a little bit weird. And I have a, a degree in English too yeah. and, and a doctorate, so yeah. But yeah, the, the, the thing that um, really pushed me is, is Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet Earth. So 1982, 16 years old, I'm reading by this stupid front door, which is weird. I have no idea why. And then I, I would read over and over anything about it. You know, my co-author of one of my series, uh, Foretold, actually was reading that the same exact summer in 1982. Mm. Um, but we, but I, I, I mean, I read everything. I mean, everything that was at any Christian bookstore was in my hand. And so, I mean, I devoured books and, and then I, but, but I started to, it started to slowly flow into like, wait a second, I'm reading about the Bible, but I'm not reading in the Bible. Mm. And, you know, as I went through a crisis of, of, of situations of the business in 2009, 2008, as you know, we're going through, everyone's going through their tough times from the, from their own yeah. business and personal life. Well, the business was dying, and that's where I really started digging into the word, and I just dug, dug anything. I mean, I go on every area, but to kind of answer your question, I, I want to throw this verse out at you. It's Revelation 1, verse 3. It says, the one who reads this is blessed. Those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep what is written in it are blessed. The time is near. He's basically saying inside of Revelation 1, verse 3, you know, if you keep it, hide it deep down in your heart, he's he's basically saying the person that studies it mm -hmm. has an extra blessing. And and those people who want that that kind of thing have the ability to get the blessing. Yeah. And that blessing, I believe, is the rapture of the bride with that too. Yeah. So I think that's the cool thing that happens in there. Now, it's so hard for most people to see it. They just don't understand why it's there and it's just too confusing. Like I, I remember this one couple told me years ago, we read from Genesis, stop at Revelation, and then we go right back to, to Genesis again. I'm like, well, <laughs> why? And she goes, well, because it's too confusing. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, wait, if there are blessings in this thing, yeah. why don't we want to hear what the words of, of the Lord are? Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and I find it fascinating. Like, And I don't know if you've noticed this, but even with like in today, with the advancement of technology, with the uncovering of maybe the deep state or the occult or the pedophile rings or any of these nasty and ugly things and these agendas that people that are, you know, have been there but are now starting to come to the surface, a lot of people who are not normal Christians or would consider themselves subscribers to Christian ideas are like, uh, wow, these agendas are kind of blatantly there and these people who have been in charge for a while um, are subscribers to this, you know, satanic worldview. Yeah. And and so then they start talking about, you know, is is this the mark of the beast? You know, is it, and it's like... It, they're they're I, asking these little tiny questions. You know what? I, I had one on uh, the very first one I did. We did Nasara and the, and the gold standard. Thing. Yeah. And I mean, this guy just 
did last night. This is um, August uh, 8th, I think it is, or 9th. Yeah. And, um, and this guy was like, you know, I really didn't care much about religious issues, but then I, and I was very much of a left wing, you know, kind yeah. of response. But as more I read about Trump and then I realize, wait, the Bible might have something to say. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that is totally cool. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. trying to encourage him in that. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think what's, what's happening, you know, truth, the, the difference between truth and lie is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Truth, <clears throat> there are a whole bunch of words for truth in the New Testament. One of the main ones is called veritas. Mm -hmm. It's where we get the word verification. Now, in money, we have this thing called bookkeeping. And bookkeeping, you have to verify what the heck that is, yeah. right? I mean, you, you know, did you put it in the right bucket? Yeah. You know, and it's a verification process. Not only do you have a bookkeeper, but you have an accountant and you have a tax account, yeah. right? And they're all verifying one another, Yep. right? And yet <clears throat> truth now has morphed into this really silly, big silliness where we say, uh, it's what it means to me. Yeah. Well, that's actually in, in the definition of the New Testament is the word opinion. Mm -hmm. And that means pseudos. Yeah. So like a pseudoscience, yeah. a pseudo-truth, that's a partial truth with yeah. that. And so I, I think what, one of the things that we need to really focus on, and I get this, we get this question, I mean, you and I have already gotten this question like sure. a billion times about the mark of the beast issue. It, it's an opening to this. And the answer is this piece of document, mm -hmm. the word actually says about itself something audacious that it is true in and of itself. And on top of that, John 1 actually equates the word Jesus and God and truth. I mean, it's a, a fascinating calculation. Yeah. So you're, if you want to believe in the Bible, it actually says you've got to, you've got to read the whole thing. You've got to believe the whole thing. Yep. And you got to uh, marry it all together. Yeah. Because if you skip out pieces of the Bible, actually, Revelation 22, it says those who uh, s throw out pieces of this word, I'm going to throw you out of the book of life. Sure, sure. Those who add to it, I'm going to add to it the plagues listed in it, within it. Sure. Well, what, what is your, I guess, take on where we are now in society, in the timeline, in all these developments that, that are, are taking place. I mean, because Christians are notorious for being like, hey, the sky is falling, he's coming back tomorrow. You know, like Revelation, you know, it's, it's happening now. And, yep. and you know, and I, I understand that, you know, you can identify things and you can kind of apply them to your your own thought process and, and, and kind of try to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I truly believe that, you know, there are things to look for and when you're kind of like looking at it at a, at a holistic kind of 30,000 foot view, you can be like, okay, we might be right here in this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to say, I'm not asking you, Will, definitely, Scott, do you know where we are in the timeline? But by everything you've studied, known, have watched, where do you think we are? Well, I, here's, okay, so I, I'm going to I'm gonna answer the question in a slightly different That's way. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know. People ask this question, especially the people who, you know, I've done, a, I've done a prophecy series called Hope in the Last Days, and it's a 12 or 13 part series. I'm kind of morphing into a 12 part series. And I've taught it many times and people go, man, I've never heard some of this stuff inside of it. But, but here's what I, I focus upon. Um, people want to answer the question of the, the where the why or the the where the when you know yeah. kind of thing yeah. how yeah. specifically but we don't always want to ask the question of the who and the why yeah so let, let me give you an example of why i say this here okay we know that there will be a tribulation temple yeah okay so there was the solomon temple right right after david solomon built it it it, it kind of goes in disrepair and then we have uh i'm blanking on his name yeah. You, you, the you Old Testament so? guy that, uh, Solomon? that you said Solomon? after Solomon, oh, uh, okay, our uh, Old Testament character. Oh, you'll know. Anyway, our Old Testament character comes back to the town, builds up. They, they protect the wall, builds up the wall, and Nehemiah. Nehemiah, okay. Uh, holy cow! 
And uh, so Nehemiah rebuilds the temple, and then we have it um, in, the, in Jesus' time frame. So, and, and it goes away in 70 AD. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24. But we know that the tribulation temple has to come because Daniel 9, 27 says that the Antichrist will actually come and desecrate it. And isn't there a group of Jews right now that are trying to build? Oh, they're trying to. Yeah. They're trying to, but but they're, but they're waiting. And you go, why aren't you done? When are you going to do it? You know, we yeah. ask this question. And yet God's going, it's not time yet. Yeah. Now, we do know that the temple has to be built. We do know, um, and we know the why, because, because the Antichrist, through Satan, is going to come in and desecrate it. It's actually called abomination, which causes desolation. Yeah. That means the grossest things that you can possibly do and make it totally unlivable in that temple. Yeah. So we know that it happens. We also know that it also disperses the Jews. So yeah. we know the who and we know the why. But God doesn't tell us the when. Do you think they... they those Jews that built the temple, they flee. Is if they flee to the hills, right? Right. You know? So are they fleeing because they realized, oh crap, we just we just built something for a, like an antichrist type figure, and yeah. this is not what we intended, and exactly. now he's coming for us. Yeah, and and, and he's and he is coming for them. Yeah, and that's in uh, Revelation eleven and twelve and thirteen. I mean, it has this gorgeous story that you know people always talk about Revelation. It is chronological, but it breaks the chronology, mm-hmm. which messes people up. And it moves into heaven, and he has he, he he does this unique way of talking about it. So there are some points where it changes the chronology and gets you all messed up. So again, back to the question is, is you know, uh, really, I like to focus on the who and the why. Mm-hmm. When you know the who and the why, because the word talks about it, I, then I can answer. I, I don't have to worry about the when. Yeah. Because actually, in, in Matthew twenty four, it says. Um, that, that the Father, only the Father in heaven knows the when, the yeah. day or the hour. So when we start talking about the when, we're acting like the Father. Yeah. And so I, I know we want to ask the when questions. And, yeah. and by the way, Matt and I could write a book right now. He's got a book here called Foundations of Liberty, yeah. right? And, and it's a great book you ought to read. It will help you with money issues with that too. But... But here's the thing, we could sell a million books by, by proving some of these things and going, it's going to happen in 2021. Yeah. I mean, we could say something like that, right? Something, we could, yeah. It because, because everyone would read it. Yeah. Um, and and in, in my day, um, there were 88 reasons for why Jesus was coming back in 88. <laughs> and then there was 89 reasons why we come in 89. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like funny because the dude never even shows up after that, you yeah. know, so... It, and it, it's it, it's a really it annoys me when yeah. I see prophecy teachers trying to say the wind. Yeah, yeah. Now what we do know is that Matthew twenty four says that there's birth pangs. Yeah. So when you see some of these things that are groanings of the earth, they're birth pangs. Yeah. So let's put it in another way: Do we know that the earth is pregnant for Jesus to come back? Actually. The point of eminency that he was pregnant as soon as he left the planet mm-hmm. back in 33 AD. As the Holy Spirit was, was helping to write the New Testament, he was setting the seeds of that. It had to grow and grow and grow. And so that's why people always say, yeah, the Bible's you're not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The, the end times, I don't know. And that's actually 2 Peter uh, 3, 3 through 9. Yeah. It says the same thing. Well, it's everything's just going to keep going, and it yeah. ain't a big deal. But what 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 happens for the Lord is that there are some unique signals that we know that they're about ready to happen. Yeah. One of the most unique signals happened in 1948. Yeah. So after World War II, the Jews have no land, and they. They, they collate in a land, and that is the dry bones of Ezekiel 37. So when that happened, we knew, now see people, this is where people get all messed up. They say, this generation will not pass away until all these things have occurred. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. So when you have the generation, I want, I want to throw something out at you. And, and you know, Scripture is so fascinating the way it, it talks, because you got to go back in the Greek. 
right? I mean, if, you know, I mean, I, I speak sign, you know, so, and sometimes it's hard to understand some of the signs that are out there and what it exactly yeah. means because it has several meanings to it. it happens in every language, right? So, uh, and, and it's, we want to say a generation. Now, the word is genea. Yeah. It also can mean an age. Yeah. We're living in the church age. I just want to push out at you this idea that we've been fighting, like saying it's 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years, whatever, for yeah. a generation. And I, I, I'm not saying no to you necessarily. Sure. I'm just saying that it could also, that word could also mean age. Hmm. And it could also actually state that the, the Jews will not pass away yeah. until all of this stuff occurs. Sure. So, and, and how many times has Satan tried to kill off the Jews? Sure. More times than we can count. Yeah. And he's going to try to do that. And that's his job. Yeah. And he keeps getting screwed up in that. <laughs> right? I mean, he's like, I mean, God's just going, bah, stop yeah. it. Yeah. You, you're, you, you're not, not going to win. Yeah. And that's why it also indicates that there will be many antichrists and many false prophets. Yeah. So, are, are we in one of those time periods where... The, the darkness is being you know brought to light and you know the enemy's plans are being spoiled because the timing is not yet yeah um, I think that's part of it I mean um, Mark Hitchcock um, has a great book called the end yeah and he actually says it in a fascinating way when he talks about the Antichrist he's like Satan has to keep he's one of the most frustrated characters in the, in the universe he always has to keep the Antichrist in his back pocket because mm -hmm. he doesn't know when God's going to do it. So mm -hmm. he's got an Antichrist character. Yeah. And by the way, in World War I, the war to end all wars, yeah. the Kaiser was known to be the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so preachers at the time were freaking. Yeah. And World War II, we had Hitler, yeah. and we had Stalin, and we had, you know, a mousy tongue. I sure. mean, just pick the guy, yeah. right? And and we can keep coming up. And I've, I people, like, text me all the time and email me, Ooh, look at this guy on a white horse. I'm like, dude, this, I, calm down, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, so the, <clears throat> that's that's part of that problem. I think we're in that church age, and we're in the yeah. groaning. And as the groaning gets worse, yeah. See, my my wife when she was first pregnant with the first trimester, you know, I mean, there are small changes. Second trimester, ooh, bigger changes. Yeah. The third trimester, all the way to the end, it was just like, it was a rolling stone going down the hill. Yeah. Everything was like, bam, 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 bam. And it was happening really quickly. And I, and I, I, would, I would kind of purpose us to that. Sure. When we see more and more of these crazy things, and we're in the middle of craziness. Yeah, yeah. And, and for, the, for the believer in Christ, it should make us calm. Because Jesus is on the doorstep. Well, not only that, but... The, the darker gets darker and the lighter gets lighter in the sense of like the, the tares and the wheat, right? Yep. That's the analogy. Grow up together. Right. Um, so it's like as the dark gets stronger, the light is actually getting stronger. Right. right? So do you see a, a time in which which there's a, an abundance or a level of prosperity that's going to be coming to the church? Can I just give you a verse that has been floating in my head and I was just writing about it yesterday? So, I mean, yeah. not yeah, even relevant to <clears throat> what we're... I mean, I was on, on another topic here, but it's in Luke 12, 35. It says, be ready for service and have your lamps lit. You must be like people waiting for their master to return for the wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. Hmm. Whoa, dude. What, what does it mean to be ready? And, and there are several um, references all over scripture that talk about this. It means doing the business that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Now, I <clears throat> thoroughly reject the idea that the church goes through the tribulation. It's, it's not because I'm, I'm, you know, escapist. Yeah. Okay. I mean, no one wants to go through the bad things. Okay? Yeah. That's not my point. Is that we as the church are fulfilling the wedding. Yeah. So here's what we have happened before we go to the wedding. So in in um, in ancient Hebrew time frame, the bride, this woman who's who's a virgin, meets up with with a guy, 
And he goes, you know, I want to marry you. Um, and then he, he goes and sets a dowry up. He negotiates with the father because she's going to come out of the business of the family, right? Mm -hmm. She's going to another family. So they negotiate an amount. And then she gets to have an absolute say. It's not like she's sold. It's not that sure, way. Sure. It's just, you know, the, the father knows that that's going to come out of, out of, out yeah. of him. And then once she does that, once she says yes, she actually does exactly like what happens with most women. They put on a wedding ring or they put yeah. on an engagement ring. Yeah. The guy doesn't do it. Yeah. What she, what it's called is they put a lamp on the on the top of their um, their overhang. Yeah. And they have to have the lamp lit. Mm -hmm. And the lamp is like a type of a spirit. Yeah. The lit. Uh, you got the oil of the lamp. That's the Holy Spirit. The Word. You're you're always burning the Word. You know. You're you're moving that. What you're telling everyone else is, I'm taken. I'm not going to be for you. Sure. So so other guys can come around town and they're not. It's kind of like what women would do when they're in a bar and a restaurant. The guys hit on the like, get away. Yeah. That yeah. Kind of thing. And so they're doing that getaway kind of thing, and they're waiting patiently. See, Jesus says in Matthew or John 14, verse 7, that if I go away, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a conversation about the wedding. Yeah. Well, and that kind of brings me to my next question, which is, you know, you don't you don't subscribe to the idea that the that the church goes through necessarily the tribulation, but is it a, a scenario where you have the tribulation taking place, but then the church being set apart, and there's almost like this parallel. They're they're coexisting, almost like that the the wheat and the tares, but but their church is over here thriving because you have to willingly accept the mark of the beast to be in the system. And right. as as I understand it, uh, you you have the there's no gray anymore. Like in other words, you're either for yeah. or against. Well, and here's here's what I would say though is is Ruth and Esther actually indicate that the wedding is a seven day wedding. Yeah. And the and the the marriage, the beginning of the marriage is a one year that they live together. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If we're gonna be in for a seven day wedding, that's a seven year kind of thing. Sure, yeah. That's that that is that is the Daniel week that we talk about. Therefore here's the thing. We have to be out of the earth yeah so that the antichrist can come in that's second thessalonians 2 2 through 10. sure see if 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 we see that if we have any clue about the antichrist and he's over there signing a peace treaty with israel and doing all that stuff we're going to go antichrist 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 yeah we're holding him back sure. when christians get up get you know get activated we hold satan back yeah. every single time we mess them up yeah they hate us yeah. So, but but here's what our job is to do: is to fulfill the wedding. See, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. The difference that happens for for a prince who's going to be king, he has to get married. Yeah. And in First Thessalonians four sixteen, Jesus comes back for his bride. Yeah. And he takes her away. But when he comes back in Revelation 14, 14, he has a crown on his head. Mm. How does he have a crown on his head? Because he's already married. Mm. So when he comes back onto the planet, he's already married. Okay. He has to be married. So therefore, he is the king and he sets himself up as the king of kings. And he rules and reigns with us. We're fulfilling as the bride. Yeah. This is Ephesians 5. We fulfill as the bride that seven-year period of time. We have to be out of the way so that the world can go through their thing. Hmm. Or we would disrupt what the world is going to happen. It's gonna, it's just going to allow that stuff. Yeah. So therefore, the Antichrist, I, I think the Antichrist is here. Yeah. I, I think the Antichrist has got, he's, he's ready. Yeah. I, you know, I can't for sure say that, sure. you know, I mean, there might be, He's growing up. I, I sure. don't know what the deal is. Sure. And I and I've I've stopped worrying about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but we are the thing that holds him back. That is that is so powerful that we realize. Yeah. And when you when you really look at what Second Thessalonians, it, see, remember, First Thessalonians is written by Paul. Yeah. And he's talking about he's like, okay, guys, 
the world didn't happen. I mean, you know, the, the rapture didn't happen. Yeah. And he uses the word, people always like argue about this. There's no word rapture in the, in the New Testament. There's a word card called harpezo. Harpezo is the repurposing out. It's that catching away. Yeah. Well, in Latin, that's the same word we would use. We wouldn't use harpezo. We use this thing called rapturo. Yeah. And that's just the same thing. Yeah. That's so that's we're just using a Latin term for that. Thing. Awesome. Well, um, that, I've got a whole bunch more questions. Sure. But um, we're going to call it good on this video, but we're going to have another part to this conversation, and we're going to dive a little bit more deeper into the money aspect, post-trip, mid-trip, pre-trip. We're going to have more conversations, so stay tuned, follow our channel, because we're going to be releasing another one of these episodes.